This year's Earth Week theme was hashtag restore. ISKL celebrated at all three divisions with the same theme, just different activities and learning opportunities. In the middle school, there were five different days with a different focus each day. Over 60 students met and planned the Earth Week celebrations, breaking into five different committees to organise one day each of themed activities. Using recycled and found materials, students created interactive learning stations throughout the week. Students worked together for three weeks to plan, organise and execute their learning stations to much success. Each day, prizes were picked out of the winner's bottle and collected each morning before school. All prizes were eco-friendly or recycled microplastics from KL Rivers. Monday was Wear Blue Day and the activity centred around restoring water. Tuesday was Wear Brown Day and the activity centred around restoring land. Wednesday was Wear White Day and the activity centred around restoring air. Thursday was Wear Green Day and the activity centred around restoring biodiversity. Friday was Wear Your House T-shirt Day and the activity centred around restoring connection. Thanks so much to the Student Planning Committee who created five different water-themed learning stations. The very first activity was an arrival activity, Go Fish. In order to play, students had to answer a question about the destruction of Earth's water systems. Using a typical Malaysian reel system, students fished for their catch of the day. If they caught a piece of plastic, they lost. If they caught a fish, they won, signifying a healthy, vibrant ocean ecosystem. In our extended home groups, we kicked off the week making planter boxes, one per home group. At the time of this video, many are already sprouting. We also did a very cool Kahoot, testing our knowledge of the biodiversity right here on campus. Miss Keithley's home group was a big winner that day. Each lunchtime had several optional interactive learning stations. Like the popular game show Family Feud, contestants had to line up against a partner and be the first to answer the question about water conservation efforts to win Water Feud. There were lots of winners in this game as students battled it out, hitting the dig bell button before their opponent to answer the question first. Another spin off a popular game show, Water Wheel of Fortune had students spinning a custom made water wheel, thanks to Mr Omrod, and depending on where you landed, you won. If you could answer the water question. The last straw was an activity that illustrated how precious water is, and how useless straws are. Students had to empty one glass of water into another using straws, we used paper straws for this activity. It wasn't as easy as it looked. The waterfall was initially going to be a pyramid of cups filled with water, but the organizers thought that would be a waste of precious resources. So they opted to fill the cups with blue colored items instead. Good call, you guys. This was a super popular activity. Teachers got in on the action too. Mr. Sprague demonstrated water planting. Although much of Earth Week's participation was centered around fun activities, the purpose was to learn something new this week. The teacher stations were an added benefit to the week's roster of learning stations. Miss Larson was her bubbly self up on the seventh grade deck with her bubbles activity. So much fun. Composting with Mr. Casey. Even Mr. Casey got into the action with his composting methods. Students got the chance to compost themselves in little paper cups. You can still watch his agency composting video to try this at home if you missed his station. Another very cool opportunity was the community slash public art projects. There were two different ongoing art projects, repurposing an old shelf and adding to the recycled elephant project. Thanks for setting this up, Miss Baxter. Lots of students and teachers contributed. You will see the day-to-day -day progress and the final product at the end of this video. Thanks so much to the Student Planning Committee who created seven different land-themed learning stations. For the arrival activity, students guessed how much the jar of earth weighed. Later, they were given pollution facts about this amount of earth. The entire middle school played Pictionary together over Zoom. This student group was well prepared with interesting land-related images. It was a heated home group battle. At lunchtime, Trash Dash was a fun game that demonstrated landfill usage. Have you ever heard the statement, not in my backyard? The goal was to empty each landfill into somebody else's landfill. If your landfill was empty at the end, you win. When we put our trash in another community's spaces, does anyone really win though? The real win would be to diminish what we put into landfills all over the world. 
Let's aim towards a zero waste lifestyle to stop this landfill cycle. The MSPE team organised this game with a dual purpose. At once, players were asked to try to play around the trash obstacles and or if they hit one, they must answer a question about landfills in order to continue playing. The strike learning station was a fun bowling challenge. Students had to answer questions correctly in order to be able to strike out climate change. This was also another really popular activity. Trash toss was a super interesting one. Tossing a variety of trash into the landfill area proved to be challenging for students who were under a tough time limit. All the items are things that take millions of years to disintegrate into landfills. Time is truly something we should all be thinking about. Miss Baxter's kitchen garden students taught us about the power of eating locally and how to avoid food waste. Thank you. The progress continued on the community public art projects. Thanks so much to the student planning committee who created seven different air themed learning stations. The arrival and lunch activity was a clever play on words, with students making a pro-mask for pledging to do their part for cleaner air. The home group gym kit was all about restoring air. In air hockey, students had to answer an air quality question in order to play the game. Using only air, they had to move their ball to the opponent's end zone first. It was way harder than it looked and so tiring for your arms and wrists. Mrs. Gayoso offered a lunchtime carbon footprint learning station using Uno Stacco Jenga towers. This was quite a fun and challenging interactive learning station. Earth Match was a try your luck type of game. If you were lucky, you would get three color matched ping pong balls from our counseling office team. Green was for biodiversity, blue was for water, orange was for connection and white was for air. If you got air, you were a double winner. Mrs Ashby taught us about some planting seedlings. Some students got to take a planting home. For airplane, using only recycled paper, students built their own paper planes and tried to fly them the furthest. This event was hugely popular, showing that fun can be as simple as a folded piece of paper. Imagine its other uses, origami, art, boats, hats, and more. Thanks so much to the Student Planning Committee who created seven different biodiversity themed learning stations. The arrival activity was another Wheel of Fortune activity repurposing the same wheel because it was so fun on the first day with the water activity. This time, the questions were all about the biodiversity of our planet. Congrats to Mr. Burke's home group for winning the Kahoot home group activity on biodiversity. Biopong was a challenging game where you had to bounce your pong ball into the corresponding cup filled with water, dirt, air or greenery. It was quite challenging because you couldn't just land in any cup. It had to correspond with the colour of your ping pong ball. Since human activity is responsible for upsetting the biodiversity balance in the world, it made perfect sense to play Whack a Human on Biodiversity Day. Poor Mr Casey. This was a really fun original cookie lunchtime learning station. Knock It Off was a call to knock off our plastic usage. The challenge was to walk quickly with an extended arm and try to knock the ping pong ball off the plastic bottle filled with water, dirt and air. This learning station highlighted the need to stop using plastic as it causes harm to humans, animals and plants through toxic pollutants. It can take hundreds or even thousands of years for plastic to break down, so the environmental damage is long lasting. Mr Booth's Cooking Around the World class made black bean burgers to show how we can reduce our carbon footprint by eating fewer animals and more vegetables and beans. Miss Baxter's students made locally sourced smoothies. Some ingredients were grown right here in Iascale Gardens. Thanks so much to the Student Planning Committee who created six different air themed learning stations. The arrival and home group activity was to write positive messages on a post-it note that was supposed to anonymously be stuck onto all student lockers by the end of home group. 
Unfortunately, we got COVID cancelled right in the middle of that, this activity, so only a few messages made it to the lockers. But it was a great planned activity. The Gimke activity continued though. Mr. Booth's home group with the big winners. Unfortunately, this activity was postponed, but it was a super fun idea to fill the hallway with chalk art drawings and messages. That we will try again for next year. The counselling office was able to do their act of kindness pledge the following week. The idea was, let's be kind to our planet. From an empty pin board to a full one. Thank you ISKL students for your kindness. There were so many students and teachers who participated. You made the pledge. Let's see you stick to it now. The sound bath happened. Such an awesome reflection activity. While you lay on the floor with your eyes closed, you're treated to a super relaxing sound bath by Miss Fuller and Mr. Baird's musical instruments. The penultimate activity planned by Stuco was postponed to be the penultimate activity for Spirit Week. There was a clothing swap each day during lunch. We use our clothing to decrease landfill usage. Each day during lunch, there was also an award-winning movie. There were lots of Earth Week activities in all of our classes as well. There was a special Grade 7 planter project that happened all week with Mr H, Mr Booth and Mrs Keithley's classes. This was a lot of work but very rewarding. Creating the planter boxes was such a fun activity. The students loved getting their hands dirty and making a change. There are so many people to thank, but mostly we want to thank the students for making this such an amazing experience. Let's make Earth Week every week.